Hey guys, uh, today we're going to do a brake pad replacement on a uh, 4th generation Mitsubishi Pajero. Now, I just had the Pajero service not long ago by the Mitsubishi dealership here locally. I would say it's probably around 7,000 kilometers ago and uh, I do do a fair bit of kilometers so that was literally I think 2-3 uh, months ago. But um, in any case, they did the front brake pads for the front tires um, and they advised that the rear ones were fine. And by that, it, you'd presume that they're fine until the next service. But um, lately I've been hearing the screeching sort of noise when I've been braking and uh, I took it over to them yesterday to got some other, get some other work done um, because it is at um, just past 300,000 kilometers. So I got them to check my wheel bearings, um, do the spark plugs, do the diff transmission fluids and uh, just have a bit of a general look around at uh, the things you do at this sort of mileage to keep the car running for a bit longer. Um, and they advised me that the rear brake pads and the shims um, were the ones making the noise so they needed to be done. And they quoted me I believe as around $380. Um, which as usual would be three parts labor and uh, one part parts or consumable so I just thought I'll go ahead do it myself save myself some bucks and um, make a video at the same time doing it so I went ahead and bought the brake pads from Repco and um, a brake separator or a placement for a G clamp or a caliper or whatnot to help with the process so Essentially, it's a similar process for most cars with the uh, brake pads and disc rotor brakes. Um, the steps are as follows. Uh, firstly, to get the bars, which are the right size or the right type brake pads for your particular um, sedan or four-wheel drive SUV, whatever type of vehicle you've got. Um, all you need to do is go to Repco or Super Cheap and tell them your car is rego, and they will find the right um, right brake pads for you front or rear as you can see this one suits so my 2007 uh, NS Pajero for the rear brake pads um, so these are the four wheel drive slash SUV brake pads they did have a heavy duty ones as well which were nine dollar dearer um, but I don't really do too much heavy duty four wheel driving and plus I don't think they um, they make that huge of a difference in your daily driving so and also the Repco didn't have those in stock so I went ahead and got these ones and I think these are sufficient um, for, for most of uh, the driving you do. Um, uh, you can get a disc brake, uh, pad separator or any sort of clamp or a key clamp or a caliber or something which you'll need later on to move the piston back once you replace the brake pads to put the piston back on. Uh, you'll need a jack, um, hydraulic jack for most four-wheel drives, a jack stand, a pair of scissors to open the brake pad box, um, screwdriver that you might need to pry open the old brake pads, and uh, yeah, socket set to, to undo the, the bolts from the original brake pad. So uh, the first step is to obviously uh, jack the car up, uh, put the jack stand underneath, chalk your wheels and uh, be safe um, so I'll just go ahead and do that um, but before I do um, it's best to undo those lug nuts while the car is um, the wheel is seated on the ground it just makes it a bit easier and I've got just the right tool to do it which I'll show you very shortly okay guys so this is what I wanted to show you um, this is an easy wheel nut remover and um, I bought it from LD on their, um, you know, they've got this discount um, stand or stall in the middle of most LDs where you got sort of um, cheap items on discount. And, um, and I saw this one and uh, to be honest, I was a bit skeptical first time I saw it. I wasn't sure if it will work or how well it will work, but um, it actually works quite well. And it is it's a very, very handy tool. It was relatively cheap as well. I don't remember how, how dear it was, but I'm sure it was under $50. Um, and it will make your life so much easy, uh, so much easier to 
to replace the lug nuts on your on your car or your four wheel drive wheel. So I'll show you how it works. So let's see first. Just take the box with the packaging, open it up. So this is the actual tool, and um, they give you three different types of um, sockets. So 21 millimeter, which I believe is the right side for my lug nuts. And then this is 19, which is too small. And then there's a 17 as well. So it just depends as to what size um, lug nuts you have. So I've got 21. So I need to take this. And I need to get this. Now I'll just show you how you can remove your lug nuts without breaking a sweat. Um, so essentially the way it works, is um, so you put the right size socket wrench over here on this end there you go and this end goes here that's it now it's got um, as you can see it's got sort of two sort of openings here one goes on the the nut that you're going to open and the other goes on the nut next to it so it sort of uses that to, uh, I think, lever it or generate you the extra force. So the lugs are super tight. I haven't touched them, I haven't opened them. And I'll show you how easy to, it is to use um, this tool to open them. So just put the, the right size um, socket onto the nut you're gonna undo, this one. And then put this one on the nut next to it. There you go. And then all you need to do is this. And your nuts are done. Your nuts are done. So it's really good, really handy. You don't break a sweat. You don't even need to stand up. Um, so I'll just go ahead, I'll undo all these nuts and then we'll remove the wheel. Uh, we'll um, get ready to jack the car up, uh, the car up before obviously we under the wheel and, uh, and then we'll get to the brakes. All right guys, so uh, the wheel's off. Um, just a sort of a quick uh, tip or um, I guess guide on how I do things. A lot of people do it similarly but essentially um, obviously safety is paramount so First thing is to look into your car manual and see where the jack point is for the rear vehicle, for the rear tire or the front tires of your car. For the Pajero, uh, just go around the back. There's the manual here. So for the Pajero, it's just, uh, it's just over here. It's very easy to find. down here sorry my jack's a bit of an angle because i think the this bitumen road is um not not 100 level but in any case it doesn't matter it's not supporting the the car's weight right now so what i would recommend is uh undoing the lug nuts while the car's on the ground it just gives you more leverage and a bit easier to do um obviously don't take the nuts off um, just undo them just hand tighten them and then jack the car up um, at the jack point and uh, it's very important that you use jack stands uh, don't use a piece of wood or a stone or, or anything else just use uh, proper rated jack stands so these are two pro ones they are 2000 kg rated um, as you can see i'm using two of them because i'm uh, paranoid but yeah you only need one um, Plus, I've still got the jack there. Uh, it's not supporting the car's weight, but um, it's just gently touching the, the support point there. So if the jack stand fails, the jack should help. Uh, plus the other jack stands there as well. Plus, and this is really useful as well, uh, once you've taken the wheel off, um, just, just pop it under the car too. So worst case scenario, the tire will hold the car's weight. So we'll prevent the tire from crushing or killing you. <laughs> so, all right, so uh, now 
this is these are the two bolts that you need to do to access the brake pads uh, this one here this one here so you just gotta find the right socket and do that okay so we're still in the process of undoing these two bolts uh, i think they probably got locked tight on them because they are super tight so i just had to source a breaker bar extension for my breaker bar to add a bit more leverage to it um so i'll just use that to open it but before i do that something i forgot to show you which is um coming back here to the bonnet and uh before doing anything further just undoing the cap of the brake fluid reservoir and what that does is um it allows any air to escape while you're playing around with the brakes and uh don't uh, let any excess pressure uh, build up in your brake lines. So, just done that, and then we'll go back. And we'll try our leg with that breaker bar extension to undo that bottom bolt. Okay, so uh, we finally managed to undo the bolt, um, holding this uh, brake pad caliper or the clamp in place. Um, as you can see, you probably only need to do the bottom bolt, and uh, this thing just swings out. So you've got access to the brake pad there. Um, so these are the new brakes. These ones here. Now let's just open it up and uh, pry the old brakes off. You might need a screwdriver here. Um, just to take them off. one and I'll just compare it to the, the new brake pads we've got so yeah so these are the Bendix four-wheel drive ones we got from Repco yesterday okay so, wow so that's the difference as you can see um, so these are the old ones and this is the thickness of the brake pad that's supposed to be present so they were quite worn out okay so we'll just take off the one from the other side as well same principle just use a screwdriver to sort of pry it open get it off Now, at this stage, you can do a few things. Um, you could bleed your brake lines, flush the brake fluid, top it up. Um, not going to do that. Gonna just do it. I'm planning to do it when I do the next uh, work on my brakes or service. Uh, I'm just going to do that and just, uh, just put these brake pads in. Uh, but before I can do that, I need to move this piston. Imagine with these brake pads thinning out, the piston had uh, moved in further and further. And if you put these thicker new brake pads in, um, it just won't, it won't fit. So just keep your brake pads uh, nice and clean and away from everything else. And uh, now you will need a G clamp or a spreader. Put a spreader here. See here, that's from yesterday. yesterday. Just it back. So I just unboxed it. Now, an easy way to do it um, is to just use the old brake pad. Just pop it here, somewhere, and just. Fitting 
right. Okay. Yeah, so put the old brake pad over the piston. As you're turning it in, the piston's going back in. So just keep pushing it in until it goes all the way in. Um, flush with where it's supposed to be. But yeah, make sure while you're doing that, uh, the cap from your um, brake fluid reservoir um, in the engine bay, um, that cap's uh, open so that you don't put any extra strain on the brake fluid in your brake lines. Okay, so I think it's, it's flush back where it's supposed to be. It's really easy to just undo this system. And as you can see, the pistons move back to where it should be. So. No, it's just a simple process of um, just putting the brake pads in. Okay, so just put the brake pads in, the pistons all the way back. And the two new brake pads are, are clipped in. So now all you need to do is just put this thing back on and just put these two bolts back in, just tighten them. And then you can put your, put your wheel back on. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And we'll um, go from there. Okay, so that's it guys, pretty much done here. Um, so put the brake pads in, uh, put the two bolts that were holding the brake pad holder or the um, that sort of clamp in place, tighten them and put the wheel back on. Um, just hand tighten the lug nuts for now. And then finally all you need to do is uh, take out your jack stands, undo the jack and uh, then just uh, tighten the lug nuts further uh, with your socket wrench. Uh, just do them obviously in a crisscross or a star shaped pattern to balance the wheel. And then do the same thing on the other wheel. Once you're done, just uh, close the cap of the brake fluid reservoir. Uh, press the brake a few times. Um, and then uh, once you're inside the car, and that's it. It should be all done. Uh, so there you go. Uh, thanks for watching another video uh, for doing some work on my Mitsubishi Pajero. Hope you liked it. Uh, it's just a way to un replace the brake pads on uh, one of the rear wheels in this Pajero, but it's the same principle for um, pretty much every wheel. So, um, yeah, pre I'm sure you can do it at home. Just make sure you've got the right tools, uh, the right brake pads, uh, the right sort of socket wrenches, and uh, you can, you, you probably should be using other things like uh, uh, cleaners and other sort of uh, PPE and stuff. Uh, just be careful with the brake fluid. Um, it is carcinogenic, so don't touch it. And uh, same thing with the brake dust. So just be a bit mindful of that, uh, especially if you want to do any cleaning around there. And uh, safety first, just make sure when you check the car up, obviously it's nice and secure on jack stands and whatnot. And, uh, and yeah, I'm sure you should be able to tackle this job at home and uh, and do it yourself. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.